I'm here with Mark Field, CEO of Ford. Uh, great to see your presentation this morning. Very positive outlook. Let me first ask you, though, uh, before we talk about Ford, about Detroit. 12.01 a.m. this morning, uh, this city comes out of bankruptcy. How exciting is that? It's very exciting. I mean, this is, this is our home. It's really important. We have a, a healthy southeast Michigan, a healthy Detroit. And I think it's just another piece of evidence of the positive momentum that's building in the city and in the area. It's, it's, uh, it's very, very exciting. And really one, of the, exciting. one of the things you guys are talking about today is your uh, n new initiative with Techstars, kind of figuring out uh, mobility for the future, bringing it here to Detroit. I was talking with Bill Ford about it earlier. How do you balance kind of uh, Ford looking for solutions to traffic, Ford uh, participating in the sharing economy, and at the same time selling more cars? They seem to be almost at odds, those two, two things. Well, if you go back to our founder, Henry Ford, he was all about um, making people's lives better and finding solutions to things. So as we look at the business, of course we have our traditional business selling cars and trucks, but we're thinking more and more of ourselves also as a mobility company. And how do we provide you know, transportation solutions for folks? So we're looking at the trends. People want to be mobile, particularly in urban areas. We want to be part of the solution. We're not looking at it as a threat. We're looking at it as an opportunity. And some things we'll build ourselves, some things we'll buy to help us to do this, and some things we'll partner with. And that's the way we're looking at it. So uh, do you think there's going to be a lot more partnering? Is there going to be a lot more cooperation in the auto industry? Well, I think overall, when you look at uh, mobility going forward, there is going to be a, an increased level of cooperation, not only, I think, among different competitors, but as you choose partners, maybe traditional partners, non-traditional partners to, to focus on solutions, partnering with the governments for infrastructure, so public-private partnerships. So it's all about working together to provide these solutions, particularly in congested urban areas. And it's going to require all of us to work together and at the same time make sure that there's a business model and a benefit for those of us that are, that are, that are participating in that and a great solution for customers. All right, so the future is bright, uh, obviously high tech and uh, really cool. If you talk about, though, the now uh, and today, your bread and butter, the Ford F-150, I'm driving it uh, today, test, testing it out. Um, what's your outlook for this, for this? You know, a lot of people are saying game changer for this truck. Well, our new F-150, I'm a bit biased, but it's a technological marvel. And uh, it really, we feel, is going to change the industry. We're seeing some reverberations of that right now. We're shipping the vehicles. Uh, the initial consumer response is terrific. And we're basically changing the, the definition of built Ford Tough. It's, it's, it's the strongest, most capable vehicle we've ever put in the marketplace using technology to solve problems for customers. And that's giving them a more capable truck and a truck that's going to be very fuel efficient. So I'm in, you know, I'm in my Raptor, 2014 Raptor. I'm kind of a lead foot. I get like 13 <laughs> miles a gallon. Um, are you going to get people to shift up to this more fuel-efficient truck, to your more fuel-efficient vehicles with gas prices at $2.90? Well, it's a great question because when you look across literally all the segments, people still want great fuel economy. You know, they want to, they, they want to make sure their dollars are stretching further. And right now, gas prices are coming down, so it's putting more money in folks' pockets. But I think consumers are a lot more smarter these days. They know that gas prices can go down, they could go up, and they want to make sure in the vehicles that they're buying that they're getting the very best fuel economy. And that's why we're taking the approach with the F-150 and all of our vehicle lines. So they know that Ford fuel economy is a reason to buy. You know, big picture, if you step back and look at cheaper gas prices, have to get people, I would think, out to buy new cars because it's less expensive to run them. How does it, though, affect your whole industry to see oil coming down uh, this sharply, this quickly? Well, I think to your point, it is a, it's, it's, it's a bonus for, for all the consumers out there. It immediately, it's almost like an immediate tax cut. It puts more money in their pockets. You know, clearly, we think that will stimulate the economy. Uh, we'll have a benefit in the auto industry. So we're looking at that as an opportunity, but also at the same time not taking our eye off the fact that we, we shouldn't get deluded by, oh, well, fuel economy is not important to consumers going forward. It will be. Because when we provide that solution, they'll get better fuel economy and they'll get more money in their pockets so they can do what they want, whether it's send their kids to college or buy more things for themselves. Will it help the situation in Europe? I mean, uh, things look great here in the U.S. Over in Europe, it's a different story. 
even if the industry kind of bounces back, Ford's still projecting losses for next year. Well, when you look at Europe, clearly with, as we're seeing here in the U.S., but depending upon the study you see, the drop in gas prices could add two, three, even four tenths of a percentage point to GDP. We think it'll be helpful in Europe because, again, it is a it goes right to the bottom line of folks. But clearly, the market in Europe is still it's still challenged. Uh, we do see growth this year minimally. Our projection for next year is a bit more growth. Uh, but we have to watch it very closely because it's been plateauing a bit. What can you do differently? I mean, you're sending Farley over there. I know Jim Farley's going to go and run your uh, division there. What can Ford do differently to try and beat out competitors with, this, with such a minimal bounce back? Well, our whole approach there is implementing what we call our transformation plan out there. And it's around building our brand. It's around introducing a full family of products. And we're doing that in particularly... Uh, CUVs and small SU, small and medium-sized SUVs, because that segment is growing wildly there, and we that's a sweet spot for us as a company. And then finally working on costs. So we're going to continue to work our plan there, continue to look at the business environment, and make sure we're doing the right things to get the business back to profitability. How do you feel about the situation in Russia? I mean, you've, you've been all over the globe, just to remind people, you know, you've run things in Europe, you've been in Asia. Um, what do you think when something like this happens? Uh, the global turmoil, and I just noticed you, you're opening a, a third plant with a joint venture in Russia. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like a strange, difficult time to expand there. Well, even in the most difficult times, and Russia is a very difficult market right now, still we have to step back. And when you look at even the, the, the diminished expectations of the marketplace, it's around 2, 2.2 million units. That still makes it one of the biggest markets in Europe. And there's never a bad time to introduce great product into a marketplace. So the plant that we're just opening is introducing our Echo Sport, which is a small uh, SUV, perfectly suited for the Russian marketplace. And we want to serve our Russian customers. So as we look at that business there, we want to make sure we're dealing with the business environment, continuing to work our plan, work our way through it, play through it, because we think it's, a, it's an important market and will be an important market going forward. I want to finally ask you about the Zakata situation here. We talked about it last time I was in Detroit. Um, will you continue to work with Takata? Will you recall all of the vehicles that are equipped with the faulty airbags? What do you think about the supplier? Well, we've been, uh, we've been working with NHTSA on, and taking the appropriate actions because, you know, for us, very simply, the safety of our customers is of the utmost importance. So we're working with NHTSA on that. And, you know, we're continuing to work with, with Takata. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the technologies, as well as working with some of the other uh, suppliers for those type of uh, systems in the, in the automotive industry, and we'll continue to do that. But will you recall the, all the cars that are equipped with those Takata airbags? Well, we've recalled all the ones in the affected areas that NHTSA has, has asked us to do so, and we'll continue to look at it going forward uh, as we look at uh, customer experience on that. But safety is very important, and we'll continue to be proactive on this as we go forward. All right, Mark, thanks so much for uh, spending some time with us. Appreciate it. Mark Fields, thanks, CEO man. of the Ford Motor Company here in Detroit.